Greetings, Fright Nights and Monster Girls. I am Count Dracula. And I'm the Horror Guru. And we just saw Livid. <laughs> Yeah. This is a movie that we've been trying to see for like six years now. Yeah, and for fucking ever. I don't think it ever got like an actual official release in America. No, it's it's a movie that's been... Uh, you could find this in like dollar bins in Europe, but mm -hmm. America, it never had an American release. Yeah. It was supposed to, and then it didn't, and then it was supposed to again, and it didn't, and eventually I was like, fuck it. Someone's got subtitles for this shit. Yep. And uh, we were able to find something, a copy of the movie, and yeah. see it finally God, with English yes. subtitles. So. Yeah, which, God damn it, that was That's the other challenge. insane. <laughs> that was insane because I know this thing is available in England. So they had to have the translation already, but getting everything to sync up was a fucking ordeal. Like, there was a point at which I was planning on getting a Blu-ray player and setting it for the European... Just so we could get a Just European so we could see this movie, yeah. you know? And, but luckily, we eventually found uh, a site where we could get it and a translation, and then the translation was broken. So then I had to fix it, and then the encoder was broken. And uh, then I had to wait for that to get fixed. And then the translation, it turns out, was using an old codex. So I had to go in and manually fix all of the fucking subtitles. And then I did that and we fucking watched the movie. That good only job, man. Yeah, thank you. Yes. <laughs> that, that only took seven fucking years. <laughs> good God. But well, we did finally see the movie. Yeah. And I guarantee you there's going to be someone in the comment section who's going to give us a much easier way we could have watched it. And I'm going to laugh so hard. I'm give you, no. Just <laughs> fuck you right now. I, I, I love you. I hate you. God. All right. So. Um, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's really good movie. It's about. So here's, here's the elevator pitch. It's a French vampire movie done in 2000 and. 2006 and it is directed by the directors of Inside I don't think it was 2006 I think it was later than that but like 2009 maybe something like that maybe maybe because 2006 would put it before Inside oh oh okay yeah I'm pretty yeah, I'm pretty sure they did this afterwards so yeah, yeah. um and uh you'll you also have to excuse me because I'm getting over being ill yeah which yeah. is why I'm like Mm -hmm. um, but it is a story about a young lady who is a nurse. She is being trained to take care of these like old invalid people. And one of these old invalid people lives in a beautiful gothic mansion in the yep. middle of fucking the somewhere in France. And, you know, she's an old lady with long claw like fingernails with a gas mask on and a... And a, and a cross attached to her chest for some mysterious reason. And, uh, yeah, you, you see where this is going. You think. You think you see where this is going. Uh, but you don't. So the movie kind of sells itself on being a vampire movie these days, which it is. But it's a vampire movie in the way Fulci movies are zombie movies. <laughs> It does. It does to kind of do its own thing with like the vampire mythos. It does. Absolutely. It does. Um, and and presents things that are traditional in vampire mythos, but doing it in a very unique way. Yeah. Yeah. And to say nothing of the fact of the way that they have um, changed the vampire mythos slightly, there's also the possibility that not everything in the story is a vampire because there mm. are a lot of things. But the movie doesn't really tell you this. Yeah, yeah. You know. the, the, this movie has like the opposite problem of movies that have the. Some movies have the explainings. Mm -hmm. This has the not letting you in enough ease sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And I say that as someone who loved this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. The movie's really good, but it definitely <laughs> is that like I could have used some explanation. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, fuck it. I'm too sick to try to dance around spoilers, so let's just get into the full thing. 
quick capsule review. I really like this movie. It's mm. a beautiful picture. Uh, it definitely, if you like early Del Toro flicks, like The Devil's Backbone or Kronos, you know, uh, you will love this movie. You know, it has a lot of those same types of touches. Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, it's definitely like a fairy tale. It it would make a great double feature with Twixt if Twixt was decent. <laughs> I'd probably put it next to uh, Don't Breathe, to be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because kind of got like the similar premise of like people trying to invade a house to try to get some sort of riches, but the person inside the house turns out to be more dangerous than they realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the other thing about Levine. It's, it's a home invasion movie, yeah. but the twist is they're invading the home of a vampire. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay, with that, let's just get into spoilers. Uncertain of where to start because... There's a lot you can spoil with this movie, but, like, it's it, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The, thing, the thing about this movie is that, like, I can follow everything that happened in the movie. But what's hard is following the logic of what happens yeah, in the movie. Yeah, Like, this is definitely <laughs> a movie that you have to appra- approach with the dream logic. Yes. There's a, there's a lot of dream logic going on, as well as a lot of, like... All right, we're going to leave this aspect of this open to interpretation and we're not going to let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just you just don't know. And there are certain things that happen that the movie just doesn't explain at all. No, no. And like there is a scene where one guy gets killed by all these little ballerina girls. Yeah. Now, the fact that there are little evil ballerina girls is explained in the plot. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 vampire used to run a ballerina school. She used to be a dance instructor, one of those really harsh, mean dance instructors you see yeah, in uh, yeah. ballet movies yeah. like Play, Black Swan. Played by the evil woman from inside. Played by the evil woman from inside, and um, her daughter and her are both vampires, and they drink blood. So sometimes those ballerinas would end up being on the menu, you know? Yeah. So you're like, okay, the fact that there's dead ballerinas here and that they're killing someone. That's not too surprising, but what is a little confusing is whether or not they are ghosts, rem- revenants that yeah. are uh, attacking this this person in this situation, which they very well could be because he kind of he transports into a mirror dimension. Which <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there, there's a mirror dimension in this movie. Like, hold on to your butts. <laughs> he transports into a mirror dimension and is attacked by them, but they don't feed on him. They just rip him to shreds with like axes knives and, and knives. axes. Yeah, and it's, so. And then they never show up again. They never show up again. Yeah. And you're like, okay, were they ghosts? Were they vampires? Movie doesn't really let you know. It just kind of lets you guess. Yeah. So now here's where I do want to put a caveat because this movie was very difficult to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. We did watch the German release of the movie. So there may be scenes that are in other versions of the movie that we couldn't find yeah, because yeah. all the information is like in German and French. And it I could, it could very well be that the cut we saw lacked some certain key scenes. Yeah, knows? yeah. And if it and if it does, definitely let me know because this is a movie I wouldn't mind watching. Oh, again. yeah. Because yeah. Um, despite like not necessarily understanding why some things happened, I thoroughly enjoyed watching them happen. <laughs> yeah, and you definitely <laughs> felt like there was an internal logic to what was happening. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. It's one of the, the thing I, I like about this movie is that even if I don't necessarily understand why something's happening, you get the impression that the director knows. Yeah. That the writers know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they, they knew what was going on, but I, I just kind of wish I, I, I had a little bit more of a clue. Yes. You know, like there's this <coughs> other underlying thing in the movie is that she's not just a vampire; she's also a witch, and there's a lot of witch imagery used with her. Yeah, yeah, she has the she has the st- the big the big scissors yeah. that the uh, like um like your you know southern and eastern European witches have. Mm-hmm. They do the thing with the uh, the moth being the soul, which is a lot closer to the Romani. Mm-hmm. Um and shit like that and and she looks like an she, evil witch. She, yeah, she I mean, flat out she just performs does. a spell. Yeah, she, she flat out does magic. There's a point yeah. where she transfers the soul of one character into another character, and they switch bodies. Yeah, and... but but where it gets really weird, and this is a part that you're not quite expecting, and this is what I mean by it feels like an early Del Toro picture. She's not only a witch; she's a clockwork mechanic. Yes, who yes breaks 
her vampire daughter literally breaks her mm -hmm. while trying to teach her how to be a ballerina. Yeah. Now, at this point, you would be like, okay, you break your daughter while you're teaching her to dance, and so you turn her into a vampire because you're a witch. Okay, no, that's not how it happened. She was already a vampire yeah. ballerina girl. Then she broke her. Then she uses clockwork cybernetics to put her back together and turn her into a living music box. Yeah. Which... Mm -hmm. To be Which fair, is, creepy as fuck. is the, one of the creepiest moments of the movie that when you realize amazing. what she is and you're just like, oh my God. It's great. It's it is. Great. It is. It's 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 a fantastic moment, but it's such a weird convoluted way around the barn that you're like. Well, that's the thing. There's a, the, the convoluted series of events. You, you could follow it. You're like, okay, I, I understood everything that she just did there. Breaking her. Put, turning her into a clockwork ballerina because for whatever reason she wants her daughter to be this perfect ballerina and if she's not going to be able to do it herself she'll turn her into one. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I get that. But then later she, because her bo daughter's body is broken, transfers her daughter into the main character's body and they switch bodies and I was just sitting there going like, why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I thought she wanted her to be a ballerina <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, was this just a stopgap measure? The other thing is, okay, if she wants a new b body for her broken ballerina cybernetic steampunk gir or girl, yeah. that's fine. But why has she waited 60 fucking years? Yeah. What yeah. makes this girl so goddamn special? Now, here's the thing. They tell you why she was picked, but that answer makes no sense. She like they make it very heavy, they very heavily imply that the reason she was picked beyond all others is because when she was visiting the old lady, she picks up a very specific book off the shelf, yeah. and that's what marks her. Well, but they're, that's they're, never explained. They're, they're, yeah, there's two things. There's that, and there's the fact that they explain because the handler, the 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 night nurse who comes in and changes all her stuff when she's sleeping. Uh, she turns out to basically be her, what do you call it? Like, it's her, like the ghoul. Yeah, the yeah. ghoul that, that, that brings her bodies and all that stuff. And yeah, she's the Renfield. Um, but what's confusing is that you're like, okay, so she's trapped on the bed because of the cross on her. So who put that on her? And why didn't she just take it off it's, if it's her master? Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't quite understand how the dynamic's going to work unless the whole goal was to get this girl here because as the as that person explains to the girl because she has two different color eyes that means two souls and i was yeah. like okay then when they started doing the transfer spell i was like oh so because she can transfer her daughter into her body because she's got the two eyes but then they switch bodies and i was like oh i thought they were going to be like two souls occupying like the same one, body same yeah, body yeah, or something yeah. like but then they switch bodies and i'm like oh, okay so i guess she just wanted her daughter to have a more functional body but then, later, the daughter with the new body attacks and tries to kill the mom and then resurrects her old body with the, with the main character in it yeah. by feeding it blood. And I'm like, wait, so you could just... You could have fixed that body just by feeding her blood all this yeah. time? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like... It's like everything... It, and that's what I mean by, like, this is where it's like, I think you have movie, explain yourself, movie. <laughs> What's the actual goal here? Because I thought that evil woman who needs her daughter to dance and so turns her vampire daughter into a living music box ballerina, yeah, yeah. that tracked. I could get that, but then why put her in this extra body like what it would make unless it was like the it's like they never say like the ritual can only be performed every hundred years or something it would have made more sense to me okay here's what would made would have made more sense to me if it wasn't the mom vampire that switches their bodies if it was just the other lady and that the other lady this entire time has been trying to save this girl but she needed to find someone who could house the soul yeah <laughs> And but she didn't want the vampire to be let free. That's why she had her trap there or something. That would have made sense, but it, it, it that's not what happened. But it's all part of the mom's plan, and I don't understand the mom's plan. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Understand what she's this is for. this is where this is where it kind of becomes like a Fulci flick. Yeah, because yeah. you're like, uh, <laughs> I'm understanding everything that I am seeing, but why? Yeah, yeah. Why is this going on? And and it's like, and you get like a one line explanation. That kind of works, like, that painting is one of the gates of hell! And you're like, uh, oh, oh, 
What are the gates of hell? <laughs> now, mind you, while this is all happening, there's a lot of other shit that is not quite explained, but you can visually follow. Like, a character touches a mirror and then goes into a mirror dimension in a room where there is no way out except the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay, that just happened. There's a point when a uh, vampire tries to escape at night, but the vampire can't escape at night because... The at night the house is in a mirror dimension, but only if you're the vampire. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you're just sort of like, oh, okay. Um, and I just uh, the thing about this movie is that I, it's a I am I'm picking it apart logically. But emotionally, I was one hundred percent. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, on the empathy <laughs> and emotion level, the movie is fantastic. Like, like the moment they find. The vamp, the clockwork vampire ballerina girl. Yeah. The minute you see that, you just immediately go, oh, oh, yeah. oh. My heart tracked this movie better than my mind did. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and that, that's the organ you want to use. You want to yeah. use your feelings to go through this movie. Because if you do well, that, I mean, the movie's I, amazing. I, I'm a huge fan of the Phantasm movies. Oh, yeah. And they have that habit of oh, being that's like... Oh, that's a really good... <laughs> that's a really good fucking... <laughs> Comparison, yeah. like you know, you need to go into this like like a phantasm movie, <laughs> where not everything is gonna make absolute sense, but there's a logic that you can track, yeah, if you let yourself. But and there's a lot of really awesome ideas in this movie. Oh like, god, any yeah. one of them could have made a movie in and of itself. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know? well yeah, just oh man, what? Yeah, yeah. When it gets to the point where you're actually watching the witch put the clockwork into oh, the god. girl, oh uh, god, uh, because there's a lot of like, there's a lot of fascia in this movie with like a skin peeling back and things like that. The funny thing is when we first started watching this movie I thought the one thing I was going to mainly complain about was just how stupid this home invasion idea is in this oh movie. Oh my god. But yeah. that, that coming out of the movie and they're like okay I have a lot more questions <laughs> <laughs> when you get yeah. to that second half. Yeah. <laughs> well like oh my god the, the home invasion plot it's it's one of those home invasion plots that you find yourself going like, this one asshole. Yeah, yeah. You know, if this you thought, one If you thought the bag. kids in Don't Breathe did not think through their home invasion and were kind of dumb, this one is going to take... Oh, this, this takes this, the this, cake. This takes the cake. <laughs> this takes the cake. Because <laughs> the girl finds the house, hears a rumor that there is treasure somewhere in the house. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah. Extra spoiler alert. The treasure is the vampire clockwork girl. Yeah. Um... Her greatest treasure. Her greatest treasure. And her this the girl's the, the human girl's boyfriend is like, if she has treasure in the house and she's like an infirm old lady and she lives alone, then we could just basically go in, ransack the fucking house, get get the shit leave, live high on the hog. And yeah. you're like... And then you can leave your father's house. You don't have to live with your dad anymore. Yeah. You, I don't have to work for a fishing boat anymore. We can get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, in and of itself, not a bad plan. But <laughs> if you were... If you had two brain cells to rub together, you'd be like, okay, so this girl has this job doing this thing. All right, here's what you do. While you're changing the diaper of old woman or whatever, you you fucking get a lay of the house. Try to figure out the most valuable shit or mm. where, or find the secret door. Well, what we're saying is scope out the house. Scope out You yeah. have this job scope that allows you to go back house. and forth. Yeah. So next time you're on the job, scope out the house, make, <laughs> make like a five day plan. You yeah. You know, like you were going to scope out the house. Uh, you're going to check every room and all that stuff. And on day five, after we've done all this planning, then we're going to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in like in um, People Under the Stairs, they got mm -hmm. away with it because the two older guys in that had already done all that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they had explained it. It's like, we've been scoping out this house for months. And you're like, mm -hmm. all right, bam. Like, you know this place. Or at least you think you do. Like, they get there and they're like, oh, there's bars on the windows. And you're like, you know, that's the kind of thing scoping out the house could have, like... Yeah, exactly, you know. exactly. <laughs> You know, to say nothing of the fact that they also do, like, some really weird shit. Like, there's a gate that you have to get through, but the gate obviously has, interrupts a road. Mm -hmm. Like, a pavement road, and it's not kept up, but it's obviously asphalt. So you're like, okay, rather than walk, like, two miles to get from the gate to the house, mm -hmm. why not just open the gate... Drive the fucking drive the fucking slowly. Leave the car right there. Break in, 
get the shit, get out, get in the car, leave, and then just never stop. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, that That would have been fine. Like, don't stop driving until morning. There's just so many better ways they could have executed this. But here's the thing. Them, them kind of, like, going in half-cocked is part of the point. Yeah. Is, is them being, like, very impulsive and stupid and it getting them killed. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, yeah, it, 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 it totally does. And you do definitely have a moment where, at every moment, you are like... This is the dumbest idea. I got an idea. I got a really good idea. Let's not do this tonight. Save ourselves. It's it's like it's a, look, I need I need you to have an IQ a little higher than room temperature. <clears throat> that actually just reminded me that there is um other weird supernatural shit in this. Like the weird, oh, the, God, weird, the yeah. weird uh tea party puppets. Yeah. That move when no one's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I guess they're supposed to be like clockwork. I don't but... know. Yeah. Huh, I assume, you, right. can, you can assume they're clockwork, like the girl was, but the girl turned out to be a real person, so Yeah. So you're like, <laughs> what's going on? I want to mess like a catfish head. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know? And those things were creepy. Oh, you yeah. had like that fox thing with like 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 the proper like uh, like um, penguin. Uh, yeah, the penguin suited butler yeah. guy, but it's like got taxidermized fox. But it's head just got, like a real fox head just going like ah. And yeah, it's like man, that is creepy. Like it's 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 like weird furry uncanny valley. Like I yeah, don't know what to call yeah. It. Well, it's it was really mm -hmm. effective, mm -hmm. you know. And it's it's one of those things that I probably wouldn't have even stopped to have questioned if not for all the other things that I needed <laughs> to stop and question, you know. So, but in, it reminded me a lot of Black Moon. Yes, you know, because Black Moon's another movie that's largely contained to a single house where a lot of like kind of inexplicable shit happens. Yeah, and uh, it that's was, why I was kind of taking it like a fairy tale. Yeah, exactly. You know, it doesn't didn't necessarily have to make complete and utter sense because it's like, like there's a point where a guy goes literally through the looking glass, like you know. It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, maybe that. Oh, maybe. Oh, like Alice in Wonderland. There's a tea yeah. party. Yeah. Oh shit! You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe it was intended to be. Yeah, it probably she, was she intended She comes in with Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Like, I don't... oh oh <laughs> oh shit! I wonder if that was like. I wonder if that part was intentional. <laughs> Holy shit! Like, no, you're not. You're not wrong. Like, no, I guess it is. Yeah, I guess it is. Like Alice through the Looking Glass, a little bit more directly than I had realized. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much of it's intentional, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There is a tea party. There is the mirror. Uh, there. Is an evil queen. There are some decapitations. Um, you could call her the Queen of Hearts. Yeah, I mean... you could call her the Queen of Hearts. You really wanted, you know, you know, or the or the. No, you couldn't really call her the Red Queen because she's in black. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. in black most of the movie, and then she's like got this weird pale white outfit at one point. Yeah, yeah. So the man, I feel bad. Because I actually really love this movie. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 I feel bad because talking about this movie leads to dissecting like the logic of the movie, but it actually is a really enjoyable movie. Yeah. Um, you just kind of have to like not think too hard about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has this has this has beautiful like fucking horror cl horror clips for days, man. Oh yeah, yeah. This has creepy clips for days. It's Most it's definitely. really fun. It's really good. If you don't need a whole lot of logic. You're gonna love this movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I mean, if you like Fulci movies, which, which, though the, the yeah. logic in those movies is is is. If uh, if you're down with best. night was is Nightmare in the City of the Dead or is it just City of the Dead? A Nightmare City. Nightmare City. Yeah, like if you're if you're okay with that, Livy, it will be fine. You'll be fine. It's it's you're just gonna. Phantasm is another one. Phantasm, Phantasm probably goes yeah. even further than this one does in like the dream logic. Yeah, especially between movies. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you like any of that stuff, if you like, if you want a good surreal horror movie, um, Levite is definitely up your alley. It does not skimp on the gore. It does not no. skimp on... Definitely made it, by the guys who made it inside. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't skimp on the tension either because it's very oh, palpable yeah, in yeah. a lot of scenes. You know, it's really it, it, it well It shows that movie. I didn't need to necessarily understand why things were happening to be scared and, like, wigged out yeah yeah like most of this is what uh i believe it was alfred hitchcock referred to as fridge logic yeah you yeah. know there's a lot of fridge logic in this thing you're like wait why did that happen yeah but in the moment you yeah. you don't even think about it yeah you absolutely. know you know you don't even question it 
you know. So, Had we recorded this vlog immediately after watching it, we probably wouldn't even have thought about it. Yeah, like, we probably wouldn't even have had <laughs> these we, questions. We've had like know? we've had some time to sit down and like really digest it, and that's why all these questions have popped up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I can tell this is going to be a movie I watch over and over again. Oh, definitely. You know, definitely. just because it, it it's so cool. You know. Um. All right. So. With that, Fright Nights and Monster Girls, uh, I, I actually do give the movie, I give the movie two dream thumbs up, uh, but one logic thumb up my butt. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, a lot of this could just easily be explained if they actually were to give us just some sort of insight onto why. It does feel <laughs> like if there was just one piece of information that we had, everything would click into place. Like, like, like I, I, I like that for like half of this movie, there's almost like no dialogue. Yeah. I love that. But I kind of wish the vampire talked to explain herself a little bit. Like, you know, even if she doesn't actually explain herself, but she said things that like intimate intentions, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, it does feel like there's a puzzle piece missing. Yeah. yeah. You know? And... Like I said, if you real if you know, oh well, there's an extended cut of that fucking movie. That okay, movie, there you go. Yeah, bam, bam. Like, no, there please you know. let me know, uh, because if there is, I really want to see it. Hell yeah. Um, so uh, with that, you can like, comment, subscribe on this channel. You can follow me on Twitter at count underscore ejacula dot com. You can follow me on Twitch, and because we stream both on Twitch and YouTube, and on YouTube we stream at. 6 p.m. on Thursday and 9 p.m. on Sunday. So we definitely want to see you here for that. And any sort of interstitial Twitch streaming, follow me on Twitter. And you will know all about it as it happens in the moment. It's a live feed, man. You could even follow him on Twitch. You, you could also do that <laughs> if you were so inclined. That would also be acceptable. <laughs> You know, um, and where can they find you, Bo? You can find me um, at the Horror Guru on uh, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Look for the Horror Guru; you're gonna find me. <laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna call you bro again. That I, I felt I felt my douche level rise. It's a little too much when I did that. Oh no! You, you gotta expel the douche, man. You gotta expel the douche. Blood's gonna get everywhere, but uh, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Oh <laughs> shit! Fuck. How do we... How do we... Bro, bro douche. When you just gotta douche the bro out of ya. <laughs> when you feel yourself... Marketing! <laughs> Million dollar idea right there. Bro the, douche. The, the ultimate bro douche is, is Sausage Party. Sausage Party, yes. yes. <laughs> I feel like... Oh, man. I got I gotta do something with that bro douche idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So, until then, uh, Fright Nights of Monster Girls, uh, Ave Satanas... Disco Inferno, and we'll see you later.